Hello. Welcome to session 13 of Living by Faith Today, based on Hebrews 11. Now, today's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to actually have a Bible study in Hebrews 11 today. I'm going to share a personal testimony with you instead. But I promise you, it's plugged into how to live by faith. As some of you may have noticed, uh, there was no posting last Friday. I skipped a week. And that's because my husband, Dan, and I were in Wisconsin and Minnesota visiting my family. And today I'm going to share a testimony that wraps itself all around that event because God showed up and that's what I want to share. First of all, before we get into that, since this is kind of personal day, I want to uh, show you my little setting here, the little staging that I do each week. <laughs> As many of you have noticed and commented on, I, I always try to match all the colors. <laughs> my blouse matches the flowers, which matches the cup. It's all kind of silly. It's part of my own silliness, but I enjoy it. Well, when I was with my sister, I and resting and just drinking in the ambiance of her lovely country home, I decided I wanted to come home and decorate my house for Christmas. Yes, I know it's a little bit early, but you know what? I don't care. I thought, why should I wait until the mood passes and then it just becomes a chore? Now when I feel like doing it, I'm going to do it. And it doesn't bother me that Thanksgiving falls inside of that because to me it's all part of a lovely winter holiday time. So next week, this will be Christmas. And that's, so today I, I gathered all kinds of little fall decorations I hadn't used yet, piled them all on the table beside me for the last hurrah. And I included my doll. This is a very precious thing to me. My daughter Ingrid made this for me many years ago. She, uh, ca she cast and, and molded all of the body, all the limbs, everything, the face, glued on the hair, painted the face. She did everything. She made the doll from scratch. It's an amazing thing. And, uh, and I love it. And she's wearing, the doll is wearing... Um, a dress based on the Carl Larson painting called Britta. Carl Larson is a well-known Swedish painter. I have the painting called Britta hanging on my wall. Britta was his own daughter. All of his paintings were of his family and his home. And he is known for bringing light and air and bright colors into Sweden. And that kind of exemplifies what I try to do in every home I've ever lived in. So he is one of my favorite, no, he is my very favorite painter. And I wanted my precious doll to look like Britta. Well, I can't have her standing up and looking to good advantage because many years ago I dropped her from a great height and broke both of her legs. Um, it's kind of irreparable because again, she was handmade. So I just put her in a long dress and prop her up so that you can't see her legs. But there's my doll, my last fall hurrah. Well, today, as I said, is personal day, just a glimpse into my life, into my heart and into my life. Uh, so I'm going to share the testimony of my recent trip. As all of you know, the coronavirus has this country on the strangest journey as it ebbs and recedes and surges and dies down, we all have to be constantly changing the rules of how we live. And that's what's been happening with me and my family. I was due to go see my parents, my regularly scheduled trip, about three months after the coronavirus hit the country, it hit the world, and we all went into lockdown. And so that trip had to be canceled. The airline held the tickets. I'm very grateful for that. And those were the ones that we recently used. But as it would ebb and flow and new rules were made, we kept making attempts. Oh, this is our chance. We'll go visit my parents. And then just, you know, before we could put any feet on it at all, everything would change again and we weren't allowed to go. So that's the way it went. And during that time, my parents went into several crises. My mom fell and shattered a hip, shattered it badly, didn't just break it, shattered it. And they weren't able to do a replacement. So she had to be, you know, 
go by ambulance to a bigger city and have a long, long, difficult surgery where they repaired, tried to repair all the shattered bones of that hip. It was an amazing thing. But my mother is a, a severe type one, brittle diabetic. It's a wonderful miracle of God that at 88, she's still with us and has her feet and has, you know, has her eyes. Now these things are beginning to fail, but at 88, they always fail. So I just feel tremendously blessed with the way God has helped my mother. But this was very serious and none of us were sure that she would make it out of the hospital alive. And I wanted to go see her so badly and I could not. And my sister, you know, bore the brunt of everything as she always does because she lives there and she took wonderful care of everyone, including my poor dad who was left alone and bewildered by all this. But I couldn't do anything. And I stressed and I fretted. I know better, but I'm not going to present myself as any different than I really am because then I don't think you can see how God works in a normal human heart. I stressed and I fretted intermittently throughout this whole year about my parents. Well, my mom came through the surgery and went back to her hometown of Grantsburg into the rehab unit and was there for quite some time. And they allowed my dad to live with her there because they really do need to be together. And that was a wonderful answer to prayer and a wonderful thing. But I was not allowed to go. And uh, what I was stressing about the most, and this had been before she even shattered her hip, my sister and I had been talking about and searching for some kind of assisted living for them because it was time and there just was nothing. There was nothing. Nothing even exists in their hometown like this. And all of the places in surrounding towns and cities that my sister tried, for one reason or another, could not take my parents. Every set of needs is unique and they didn't fit anywhere. They, they wouldn't take them. And it was, it was distressing. Um, I stewed and I fretted. What is God going to do? What is God going to provide? There is nothing, but they can't go back home. So what's the solution? Well, uh, that, that problem just was ongoing. I shared it on some um, prayer letters, some chains, and I shared it with some friends. And so I know that many of you have been praying about that for my parents. So listen up, because God showed up. That's where we're going with all of this personal rambling. God showed up. Well, anyway, my mom was in that rehab unit for quite a long time. And when the day came when she was discharged, you know, where were they going to go? They really couldn't live at home anymore and nothing else was there. And the day it was needed, a brand new little assisted living facility designed especially for people in my parents' condition rose out of the mist like Brigadoon. I love the story of Brigadoon. <laughs> um, there it was. It was brand new. We hadn't found it before because it was brand spanking new. And it was custom made for my parents. It was cute medical personnel that love them and take good, wonderful care of them. Um, a cook who <laughs> caters to their every need and whim. It's, it's just this marvelous place, one small room, but my sister decorated it with all of their own things, very Swedish, and they loved it at first sight. So when they were actually discharged, they went straight into their new home. What an unexpected blessing. It shouldn't have been unexpected, I need to add here, because when God tells us to hope, that means have expectation. Wait for me to act with expectation. Maybe it's today, God. Maybe it's around the next corner, God. Yay. Well, I had periods of time when I could do that because God would reassure my heart, give me another verse to go on, calm me down, and remind me that he was taking care of everybody. But I never held on to that for very long, as my family can attest. Pretty soon the stress and the worry would return, but you know, that's just the way I am. It seems to be hardwired. God and I are working on it, but God showed up. 
at the nick of time, not when I thought he should, not when I wanted him to, but when it was actually needed, there it was. It just presented itself like, like Brigadoon, and in they went. So praise the Lord for that. God showed up. Not only is God who he says he is and has done what he has said he has done, but God does what he says he will do. God showed up for us. Well, then the second little hurdle, I was still not allowed to visit them. And I wanted to see my parents again so much for so many reasons, as I'm sure many of you can guess. And um, I kept giving it to the Lord and trying to get there and we'd make these aborted attempts to travel. And it just couldn't be done. I was 100% helpless. There wasn't a step left to take. And I just, again, I had to just learn to trust God, that God was caring for them, he was caring for my sister, and he was caring for me, and nobody was gonna slip through the cracks. When something was really needed, God would work it out. From time to time, I was able to rest in that. <laughs> well, one day, very recently, I heard from my sister, and she said, come right now. And we said, we're there. <laughs> we redeemed those tickets that were waiting, and we went. She said, the place where they're living, this new facility, has changed their rules because the coronavirus in our area is now ebbing. And so they have designated a room at the end of the hall where people can go and visit with family and friends. You have to wear a mask, you have to socially distance, but you can be in the same room with them. You can't go into their room, but they have provided this. And I was thrilled. We're on the way. And we went. Within a few days, we were there. And <laughs> my sister greeted me with um, a sheepish look. She said, guess what? The facility recently changed all of their rules again because, again, the coronavirus in our era, area is starting to grow and flow. And so they've rescinded that rule about visiting and you can't go see mom and dad. Okay, <laughs> we are trusting God here. She knew and I knew and my husband knew that he had brought us there at this time and it was the right thing to do. I wanted to see my sister as well after all and we could go visit at the window. It was cold, <laughs> but we could bundle up and we could go to the outside window and wave. And we did that a few times. But before that, God showed up again, and I want to share this as well. Uh, maybe the second day we were there, it was early on in the visit, my mom had a doctor's appointment, and so my sister brought her because that's my sister's the only one who is able to do that, has been given the authority to do that by every all the people involved. And mom had to be hospitalized. Things did not go as planned. My sister came home at the end of what turned out to be a very long day for her, and she said, well, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is mom is in the hospital. Her diabetes was way out of whack yet again, so badly they couldn't send her home, and they kept her. She was there for uh, the better part of two days. And But my sister said, the good news is they're going to allow you to go in and visit with her as long as you want to while she's in the hospital. She said, you have no idea what a miracle this is. She said, we who live here, let me tell you, this is not happening in our area at all. But she said, they've said you can come. So I was so thankful to God and so happy. So the next morning I got up and I went in and I was able to sit with my mom, just in a nice chair right by the bed, no masks. We were, you know, three, four feet apart, and we chatted and we laughed because my mom, by the way, was feeling for those two days, wonderful. The hospital knows how to regulate everything and they took wonderful care of her and while she was there, she actually felt like a million bucks. So we laughed, we chatted, we caught up, I showed her all kinds of pictures and then we would laugh some more. What a blessing from God, what an unexpected blessing from God. God showed up. Not when I had planned that he should, but when it was actually needed. That's the main lesson for today. 
there were some other lovely little perks. We had two mornings of fluffy snowfall where it stayed on the branches and covered the ground. It was like a winter wonderland. It didn't stay. There wasn't any shoveling necessary or anything else that goes along with winter living. But for two mornings, we got to wake up to a winter wonderland. I kind of think God did that just for me. It really fed my soul. So what I want to share today with you is that manifestation of faith called trust. Not based on the fact that I responded so well, because I actually did not. I spent at least an equal amount of time stewing and fretting as I did trusting. It was a constant um, ongoing work that God is doing in my heart. But based on God showing up, I just want you to see that when the need is really there, so is God. You don't have to figure it out ahead of time. You don't have to know how he's going to do it. If you could do that, he wouldn't be God. You would. Learning to just trust him when there's nothing you can do is a manifestation of mature faith. Sometimes he calls us for some heroic act, some life steps that have to be accomplished for us to manifest faith. And sometimes it's trust. Because I believe God is who he says he is, because I believe he has done everything he said he has done, and because I believe he will do everything he has said he will do, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to leave my life, my parents, my sister, and everyone I'm concerned about in God's hands and trust that he will show up when the time is right. That is also a response of faith that God is pleased with. And I want him to say, well done. You left that in my hands and you rested in me and you went on with your life. That's what I was looking for. Just trust me. You know, that lovely verse in Mark, I think it's Mark chapter uh, 5 verse 36 that Jesus turns and he says, don't be afraid. Just trust me. That has become my life verse. Don't be afraid. Just trust me. I want to leave you with some verses from my devotional Bible that God spoke to my heart during all of this so strongly and I hope that I never forget them. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 114, the first eight verses. And he's talking about the things that we studied two weeks ago when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. Remember that it, it said the water stood up as high walls on either side of them and they passed through the middle. None of this silly nonsense about the, the river being at flood tide and just spreading out and they waded through. Oh, I've heard that so many times over the years. The Bible says God did it and he piled up the water like walls. And this is dealing with that. But God spoke it to my heart about my parents. 114 verse 1. When the Israelites escaped from Egypt, when the family of Jacob left that foreign land, the land of Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel became his kingdom. The Red Sea saw them coming and hurried out of their way. The water of the Jordan River turned away. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. What's wrong, Red Sea, that made you hurry out of their way? What happened to you, Jordan River, that you turned away? Why mountains did you skip like rams? Why hills like lambs? Oh, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He turned the rock into a pool of water for his children. Yes, a spring of water flowed from solid rock when his children were thirsty. And you know, God applied those wonderful words to my heart concerning my parents. And he said, when they actually need a place to live, the water is going to part and it's going to be there. And for a while I would trust. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. And then, I'd, you know, something would happen, a new crisis, and I would stew and I would fret. But God reminded me of these verses again yesterday and today and said, See, I told you, when you're walking with the Lord by the light of his word, as you walk through life, you get to the point of actual need and the waters are going to part. When you get to the point of actual thirst, water's going to come from a dry rock. 
God said, you just watch. Watch and see what I will do for you and for your family. So I have things on this list. The first and foremost was assisted living for my parents. And God said, see, when they really needed it, the sea parted. There's some things on the list that haven't been fulfilled yet, but this makes me trust when the need is really there, not when I would like to see it happen, but when it's really there, water's gonna come from the rock and feed my family and give us drink. The sea is gonna part and we're gonna walk right through. So that's my lesson for today. A personal glimpse into my life and my heart and a lesson about just trust the Lord. He's gonna show up. So until next week when we'll be back in Hebrews chapter 11, goodbye.